The focus of this videotape is on asepsis and hand washing. Hi, I'm Kathy Getrust, and I'm an instructor in community health nursing. People once believed that sickness was caused by evil spirits or retaliation by the gods for misdeeds. About 150 years ago, a French chemist by the name of Louis Pasteur discovered that many diseases were caused by bacteria. He also discovered that bacteria could be killed by heating. Pasteur's name has been used to refer to the heat method of killing germs. You may be familiar with the word pasteurization. Pasteurization is the process of heating milk to kill harmful bacteria and make it safe for all of us to drink. Pasteur and other scientists developed what is called the germ theory. This theory states that all infectious diseases are caused by living things called microorganisms. These microorganisms are very small and unable to be seen with the naked eye, but nonetheless exist. There are a wide variety of microorganisms. Some examples are bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoa. Many microorganisms are useful to us. They are called non-pathogens because they do not produce disease. Some of the ways that they can help is that they can help in the process of making cheese or yogurt, in the baking of bread, or in the breakdown and digestion of food. There are other microorganisms, however, that are called pathogens. These pathogens are not useful to the body and can produce disease in humans. Infection occurs when these pathogens invade the body and cause disease. For disease to occur, certain conditions called the chain of infection must take place. The first in this chain is the causative agent. That means there has to be exposure to a pathogen that can actually cause a disease. An example might be a germ such as bacteria. Then there has to be a reservoir or a source. The human body is one of those sources or another place in which the pathogen can grow and reproduce. There also needs to be a portal of exit. That means there has to be a manner in which the pathogen can leave the body. Example might be through the nose by blowing or coughing or sneezing. Then there needs to be a mode of transmission or a method in which the pathogen is carried from one person to another. Typical examples would be on the hands, on the food we eat, or with sexual contact. Then there needs to be a portal of entry a portal of entry means the manner in which the pathogen enters another person. Examples of that might be through the mouth, through the nose, or a break in the skin. You also then must have a susceptible host. By susceptible host, I mean someone that's more likely at a higher risk of becoming ill than someone else. A susceptible host might be someone that has poor nutritional habits, poor sleep habits, or has a chronic problem with stress that makes them more susceptible to the invasion of pathogens. It's important to note that a break in any one of these links in this chain of infection can prevent the spread of infection. An example might be a break in the mode of transmission. Without uh, hands, uh, dirty hands filled with germs moving from one person to another, 
the pathogen is not going to be moved. So by the use of proper hand washing, that mode of transmission can prevent the spread of infection. The body has some natural defenses that protect it from an infection. Some of those defenses include the skin. This is probably the most important one as it acts as a barrier against entry of pathogens. The skin must remain intact, however. That means that it cannot be impaired in any way for it to protect the internal organs from the outside environment. Another defense is the mucous membranes. Mucous membranes are the lining of the respiratory tract, the urinary tract, and other passages. These mucous membranes are sticky and they trap foreign material. Cilia is another defense that we have. Cilia are fine microscopic hairs that line the inside of the nose and other parts of the respiratory tract that propel the mucus out of the body and prevent us from becoming ill. Coughing and sneezing also helps remove foreign material from the lungs, throat, and nose. Hydrochloric acid is a very strong chemical that's produced by the stomach that destroys many pathogens as we eat them on our food and on the hands that we put next to our mouth. Our eyes are protected by tears that provide a flushing action to remove many of the pathogens that enter the eyes. A fever will increase the body temperature, making the environment for germs to survive unsuitable and therefore pathogens will die. White blood cells are a certain type of blood cell that destroy and devour pathogens that make it into the bloodstream. Inflammation is another defense in that it is a process that brings blood to the area of infection. Signs of inflammation are redness, swelling, heat, and pain. Maybe you've experienced the inflammation process when you have stubbed your toe or have an abscessed tooth. Uh, you notice there's redness, swelling, heat and pain that accompany them. It's actually a defense that the body has to localize the infection and keep it from spreading to all other parts of the body. The last natural defense that we have is the uh, body develops substances called antibodies after having an infectious disease. These antibodies are proteins that sometimes can protect the body and prevent the occurrence of that same disease occurring a second time. An example that comes to mind would be measles. Once a person has measles, antibodies are developed and frequently it is uh, not likely that, uh, uh, that measles will happen a second time. Serious bacterial and viral infections are increasing in healthcare facilities as well as in the general public. Ill patients, especially the elderly and frail, are particularly susceptible to infectious diseases, as are the very young and those folks that have chronic illnesses such as diabetes. Bacteria are often the cause of serious illnesses. Unlike viral infections, bacterial infections are usually treated with antibacterial agents.